Today, I'm doing some fine tasting. Mmm. Quite bitter. I'm running late. And we get real geeky. Look at the completely green control unit tree. That's what we want to see. Ooh, sorry, I was running a bit late there. Anyway, today we're gonna work on the DCT gearbox of the car. Luckily, that's something I haven't done on the channel before, right? Good! New content! So the DCT gearbox is filled with oil, of which BMW states it's a lifetime supply. I mean, maybe the lifetime of a rabbit. So we're gonna get the DCT gearbox at full service with all the correct and required parts. Afterwards, we're also gonna replace the transmission mounts for upgraded ones. So let's go ahead and do this! Alright, so to get to the DCT gearbox, we would need to remove this under panel, and in my case, we would also need to remove the exhaust, as there are two bolts of the under panel right above this pipe. Revealing the DCT gearbox. Alright, so we're gonna start off by opening up the fill plug with an 8mm Allen key. And there we go. Then I'm gonna hold this drain pan here just to be sure. Ooh, look at that. It looks quite clean still. Alright, so as you can see, this is almost done dripping. In the meantime, I reinstalled the exhaust as we're going to start the car later on, and I didn't want to become deaf. So we're now going to bust open the drain plug with a 10mm Allen key. Ooh, that was very loose. Here we go. Ah! Mmm! Mmm! <laughs> Quite bitter. Alright, so while the drain pan is still dripping, as you can see here, we're going to remove this filter. As you can see, there's a C-clip holding this pressure filter down. So with a pair of pliers, we're going to remove the C-clip. There we go. Then we're going to pull out the cap of this pressure filter with a screwdriver. And then finally the pressure filter itself. I'm going to use a pick tool for that. There we go. Yeah, that looks quite black. Alright, so next up we're going to remove the drain pan. To create some clearance, we're first going to bend away this piece of heat shield. There we go. Then with the T30, we're going to remove 14 bolts of the drain pan. Oh, that's messy. So next up, we're going to remove this suction pump by removing this 6mm Allen key bolt. We are going to reuse this one, so make sure you keep it clean. Next up is the removal of this filter. There's a T30 over here and a T30 over there. Then we're gonna pop this out. Ugh. There is so much oil in this thing, it's unbelievable. I believe in total there's around eight and a half liters circulating the system. All right, so now we're gonna install all the new parts. For this, I put on a fresh pair of latex gloves, which I found in the bedroom, I mean the garage, because from now on, the install has to happen as clean as possible. So we're gonna start out with our new filter. There's a small O-ring over here, which we're going to lube up. Then we're gonna simply slide it in the hole. That's what she said. There we go. Then we're going to pop on this new cap, also lubing up the o-ring. Alright, so in the end, I got it in with a little bit of love of this hammer. After a few gentle taps, I got it in flush. Now we're going to install the new C-clip. There we go. Alright, so next up is this filter, the new one. We're also obviously going to lube up the o-ring. Then we're going to insert it. There we 
we go. So then we're going to install the T30s again. So this one needs to be torqued to 8 newton meters, and this one would need to be torqued to 5 newton meters. I don't have a torque wrench that goes that low, so I very, very gently tighten them. The one a slightly bit more than the other. So next up is the reinstall of the suction pump. As this thing is still oiled up, as you can see, we would not need to lube it. The pump goes back into this hole. There we go. Then this Allen key bolt would need to be torqued down to 6 newton meter. All right, apologies, my memory was full. Again, I don't have a torque wrench that goes to six newton meter, so I tightened it very gently. All right, so with very clean hands, we're going to install the new oil pan along with the new gasket. We're first going to gently clean the edges of the sump. All right, so that's clean as a whistle. So now we're carefully going to install the pan. So first we're going to hand tighten them all. All right, so now there's a certain sequence in which we would need to torque the pan down to the sump. Here's the sequence on how it's supposed to be torqued down. I'll put the image on the screen right now, so let's go ahead and do this. And that's all of them. All right, so the next step would be to get this gear oil into the gearbox. But as you can see here, the hole in which the oil enters the gearbox is very narrow. So this end of the fluid transfer pump is too large to fit in. So I made this. It's a bit ghetto, but this is how I would be able to get the oil into the gearbox. So let's get pumping. Ah, now we can see it overflowing. So that means it's pretty much full now. We've inserted almost five liters. So now we're going to take this out. Then we're going to close the hole with the fill plug. We're going to snug it up for now, like so. All right, everyone. So we're inside the car now. And as you can see, I have connected the car to ISTA. Look at the completely green control unit tree. That's what we want to see. So in order to do the oil balancing adjustment, we're going to go ahead and go to vehicle management, service functions, powertrain, the DKG transmission control, then adjustment, then oil balancing. Then we're going to add this to our test plan. Then we're going to go ahead and go to service plan. And here it is, DKG oil adjustment. So now we're going to click this next start communication test. Continue. Communication with the control unit is OK. Continue then. Read corresponding repair instructions before starting the oil adaption procedure. Well, I've already read this. So we're gonna hit continue. Current oil temperature, 18 degrees. Welcome to the summer in the Netherlands. Do you wish to continue the oil adaptation? Yes. Continue. Start engine, switch off the air conditioning. All right, so we're gonna start this bad boy up. There we go. I've already uh, turned off the air conditioning. So now we're gonna hit continue. P is activated in the following. Well, it's already in its park. So now I'm going to hit continue. Current oil temperature 19 degrees. Uh, okay, I guess. Continue. Now raise the idle speed with the accelerator pedal to 2000 RPM for one minute. Well, let's go ahead and do that now. So now we got the message, now end engine speed increase. No longer press the acceler accelerator pedal while the service function is being formed. Current oil temperature, 20 degrees. So let's go ahead and continue. Current oil temperature, 20 degrees, okay. Continue. All right, so the actuator system is now activated. First gear is engaged. System pressure is limited. Maximum cooling is activated. Important, the accelerator pedal must not be pressed. Next. Start activation and perform the oil adjustment procedure according to the repair instructions. So I'm going to hit continue. Oh, Ooh, I can hear it going into first gear. Carry out oil adjustment procedure in accordance with repair instructions. 
Now I'm gonna go ahead and go under the car. All right, things are starting to get hot in here. So we're now gonna open up the fill plug again. All right, so as you can see, nothing is dripping out. So as you can see, there's lots more room for oil to come in there. So this one is now empty. So we're gonna grab another bottle. So we're at 28 degrees, as you can see. So we're now gonna go ahead and add the final liter of the gearbox oil. All right, so as you can see, the fill plug is now overflowing. The temperature is around 32 degrees now, so we are able to close it back down again. So I'm gonna now remove the pump. Let me check the temperature. All right, so it's exactly 32 degrees Celsius, which allows me to put this thing back up again. All right, everyone, so that was it. I tightened down the fill plug again. You would need to torque it down to 25 Newton meters. I'm sorry I did this off camera as my memory was full. So as you can see, the temperature is at 37 degrees. I closed it at around 33 degrees, which is um, perfectly within spec as you would need to close it above 32 degrees, but below 40 degrees. So now we're gonna hit continue. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and hit the brake pedal real quick. And upon pressing the brake pedal, it says oil adjustment is now finished. Next and service function. And that's how you do a DCT oil flush. All right, so off camera, I did all the other gearbox adaptations with ISTA. I'll make a separate video on how to do these, but for now, it's just a matter of driving around and let the DCT gearbox set its values along the way. So we're gonna take it easy the first couple of miles, but we've done everything correctly, so the gearbox is happy for many more miles. All right, so another serviceable item are the transmission mounts. While we're in there, I thought it was a good idea to have these changed out as well. So PowerFlex was sexy enough to sponsor the channel by providing me with these transmission mounts. These apparently provide for a tighter fit of the transmission in the chassis. Interesting to see how it feels when they're installed. So first we're going to support the transmission because we're removing the carrier that holds it to the chassis. All right, so to support the transmission, I'm gonna use this piece of wood and the jack. In the ghetto, in the ghetto. I don't care as long as it does the job. That'll do. It only needs the tiniest bit of support. A bit ghetto, but it is what it is. All right, so now we're gonna loosen all these 13 millimeter bolts. And that's our transmission carry removed. All right, so as you can see, it's kind of hard removing the transmission mounts with this heat shield still in the way. So we're gonna move the heat shield a bit backwards so that we can reach the transmission mounts. All right, so now we would be able to remove the transmission mounts. So with a 13 wrench, we should be able to remove it. Yep, there we go. That's one. And that's two. All right, so here we have our transmission brace, which I gave a bit of a clean, which didn't help at all, apparently. All right, so these were the transmission mounts that came off the car. Let me show you the flex in one of these. As you can see, these flex a lot. You know who else flex a lot? If we then compare that to the power flex ones, I can't even move these. These just feel rock solid. I wonder how that would feel on the car. So before installing the transmission carrier on the car, we're first going to install these transmission mounts to the carrier. So as you can see, there's a little notch over here, which goes over the top of this one. Then we're gonna use the new hardware provided by PowerFlex. And torque these to spec. And repeat the process on the other side. All right, so now it's time to reinstall this on the car. All right, so off camera, I went ahead and partly screwed on these nuts with the washers. 
space is very limited here, so that's why I went ahead and did this. And there we go. First, we're going to attach the mount to the body of the car. Then we're going to torque it to spec. And there we go. All right, so now we can release our ghetto transmission jack. And further tighten down the transmission mounts. We're just going to do these good and tight since we're not able to get a torque wrench in there. And that's the transmission mounts installed. All right, so how does it drive? So now I can hear a slight whine coming from the gearbox. I think it's pretty cool. It's a bit race car like. That said, if I didn't know they were installed, I wouldn't probably even hear it. It's very subtle, but I'm glad with that because I don't like additional vibrations or noises. So thanks again, PowerFlex. All right, guys, so that was it. This gearbox is happy for many more miles to come, especially after all the adaptations I've done with Ista, the car feels like new. Again, thanks to PowerFlex for sending over the transmission mounts. Guys, I'll put all the part numbers of the parts used in this video in the description below so that you can also do this yourself. Guys, thank you so much for watching and see you next time. So first, we're going to support the transmission as we're going to loosen the carrier that's holding it to the shed. So first, we're going to so first we're going to um, so first we're going to support the transmission. Yeah. Yeah. So first we're going to <laughs> <coughs> Then we're gonna pop on this cap and also Then we're gonna pop on this cap also Then we're gonna pop on this new cap also lubing Then we're gonna pop off this cap also lubing oh, Jesus Then we're gonna pop off this cap hey, pop on okay. Then we're gonna... Alright, so in the end, I got it flushed with the... Jesus! Heb je een spraakgebrek of zo? Alright, so in the end, I got it in with... Nice.